Sziasztok, én Vaska vagyok, és az NBA továbbra is marha jó fej. Nem elég, hogy a szombati és vasárnapi sávot telepakolja jobbnál jobb meccsekkel, hogy mi, európaiak, emberi időben élvezhető NBA meccseket lássunk. Folyamatosan, legalább havonta egyszer küldenek egy e-mailt, amiben az van, hogy néhány nap múlva lehetőség nyílik találkozni és egy 10 perces mini Zoom interjút készíteni egy NBA legendával. Járt már nálam Clint Capella, járt már nálam Carlos Boozer, még talomban van egy Bruce Bowen interjú, és most egy NBA bajnokot uh, sodort az utamba a sors, mégpedig Glenn Rice-t, aki a Los Angeles lakers Kobe Bryant-tel, Shaquille O'Neal-el nyert még az ezredfordulón bajnoki címet, és a liga egyik első mesterlövésze volt, aki nem csak a számokat hozta, 1500 tripla környékén vonult vissza, hanem a minőséget és a dobás minőséget is 40% környékén dobott legjobb szezonjaiban, úgyhogy ő vele találkozhattam és beszélgethettünk, és ennek a rövid sorozatnak talán a legélvezetesebb, legizgalmasabb interjúját sikerült vele összehozni. Nézzétek meg! Hi, Glenn, nice to meet you. Uh, nice I'm meet gonna you. be quick as your shot release was. I would like to ask you first and foremost, uh, what was your favorite team to play on? The one the, you won an NCAA w, uh, championship with, the Heat, where you were the franchise cornerstone for a, for a new franchise, the Charlotte years when you were probably at your peak, or the Lakers mm. where you won the championship. Every team had its uh, virtues. What is your yes. choice? Yeah, that's uh, that's a great question. Um Like you said, I mean, I, I, I think uh, when you go back and you you starting at college, uh, when you talk about <clears throat> me, each one of those team, each one of those team presented me uh, with something very valuable. Um, so it's, it's hard to say my favorite. Uh, I think uh, I've had my favorite moments from each one. And when I put it all together, I think that's what. Uh, enabled me to be able to go out and uh, achieve the ultimate goal. And that ultimate goal was to win an NBA championship. And that was with the Lakers. Uh, so if you had to dress me up, <laughs> I would have to stitch uh, all those jerseys together because I, I, I just can't say one was the front runner over the other. It would just have to be just one big old uniform. And uh, it was truly a blessing to be a part of uh, each one of them. So, Yeah, there you ha have it. I, 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 I hope I satisfied you uh, with that answer. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, the next one will be tougher. So you, you, you took everything from each of you took everything from each of your team. Uh, let's talk about teammates. Let's create the Glenn Rice All Stars. You are the three in this uh, team, and you have to fit it up with your NBA teammates. How would that five look like? Wow, I've never never had that question. That is a great question. I don't know if it's going to be that hard, though. I would have to say that uh, at my point guard position, uh, I would have to go with my my true friend, uh, Steve Smith. Uh, he was with me uh, uh, with the Miami Heat. I, I, I think when you talk about Steve Smith, uh, he was one of the up, up and coming superstars of the league until he had uh, hurt his knee. So, Steve Smith at my uh, he would be my point guard. Um, of course, <laughs> this may be a little unfair, but <laughs> uh, I got to go with uh, Kobe Bryant at the two, uh, Shaquille O'Neal center, <laughs> and my power forward would have to be. It's the toss up between the the late great Anthony Mason and uh, Vladi Diva. And the reason it, it, it's tough because when you think about Anthony Mason, he brings that toughness uh, to the team. He's a, a four. Who, he would be a great compliment he, to Shaq. I, and you know what? He would be. Um, Vladi Divac, who I've always thought is a great friend, uh, one of the uh, probably the best passing big man that I've ever played with and one of the uh, true best uh, big man to uh, play in the league. So, I would have to put uh, Vladi Dibak in there because you're going to need somebody who can uh, distribute the ball uh, uh, throughout the core of that team because when you when you talk about that team, you got a lot of guys that want to get some shots up. <laughs> okay. okay. You have a great team with probably two uh, shooting guards, two centers, but it's your team, so yeah. you feel free to play. Well, I mean, and, and here, here's the beauty of that, especially when you fit it into the game today. I mean, it's, you know, outside of, 
uh, Shaq, I mean, everyone else has got the capabilities of uh, playing two or three positions. Yeah. The NBA Finals uh, are starting <coughs> tomorrow, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's create a situation, a scenario, when you are still uh, in your prime, and because of the all the injuries, both teams have an emergency roster spot, and you can mm -hmm. sign with either of them. Uh, the money <sighs> amount is the same. Which one of these teams would you choose uh, to play for? Man, that's that's tough. <laughs> that's tough because I I, I I have my reason why I like both teams. Uh, you know, number one, uh, starting with the Phoenix Suns, uh, you know, when you talk about Chris Paul and Devin Booker, you're, you're talking about two guys who, number one, the young Devin Booker is uh, fastly becoming one of the young superstars of the league today. And uh, Chris Paul, I mean, being a veteran, I understand his position. Uh, you want to win that NBA championship uh, to put the icing on the cake and uh, before uh, Father Time catches up with you. So, yeah, with that being said, I may have to – Chris Paul may convince me to lean more toward Phoenix. Because, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, I, I, I think they get up and down a little bit more. Uh, they, they shoot the three ball a little better more often uh, than Milwaukee. Uh, so, yeah, that would – and I think they could use a, a small forward who has uh, the capabilities of doing something like that and doing it on a consistent basis. So yeah, the Phoenix Suns. The Suns. Uh, you were one of the first sharpshooters of the NBA, uh, <laughs> volume-wise, quality-wise. But since you retired, three-point shooting has become an art form, and it's not only catch and shoot, and it's not only transitions. It's step backs, tight steps, uh, playing <clears throat> amazing one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, handle, yeah. and after that, releasing a shot. Uh, yes. Seeing the people, the, the young folks playing around in the NBA and seeing your mentality and how you approach the game, uh, who would be some, who, who would you, who would you model your game for? So uh, would you be a, a step back guy these days or would you be, would you be a running around catch and shoot guy? But, but, <laughs> but that's, what, what would be your uh, choice uh, seeing how people are getting the green light for each and every three pointer? Yeah, I don't think you'll see me doing any step back. <laughs> I, just, uh, I, I like my knees a little bit better than that. Uh, I would, I, you know, I mentioned this earlier. I, I, um, I think the guy who pretty much goes out and suits the way that I play, uh, he, he's, he's been absent the last year and a half to two years, and that would be uh, Clay Thompson. Thompson. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I think uh, this guy is probably one of the most accurate shooters uh, that's in the game today. Uh, and you, we all know once he gets hot, he can put up, <laughs> he can put up 45 in a heartbeat. Uh, he can score, you know, 25 to 30 points in one quarter, uh, whether it be from three point line, whether it be even beyond. And like you mentioned, these guys are shooting beyond the three point line as if it was just like waking up in the morning. And, uh, so that, that he would be the guy that I would, uh, give the edge. I also said that uh, uh, when you talk about shooters in the league, there's there's no better shooter than Steph Curry. Uh, but you, but you, the similarity uh, <clears throat> in your streakiness with with Clay is is uh, quite astounding. Uh, one yes. last question: uh, You had a time when you were uh, closer connected to MMA. And uh, yeah. we are the right holders for UFC, uh, the sports oh. network I work for. And uh, this week, we will have the third uh, McGregor Poirier uh, matchup. Uh, yep. <laughs> who would you put your money on? If I, was a, <clears throat> if I was a betting man, I would have to go with McGregor. I mean, he's always – he's been one of my favorites. I mean, he, he is probably one of the most entertaining guys – uh, that I've seen in UFC, probably like across the board in sports. I, I enjoyed the moment where uh, he went up against Floyd Mayweather, who was, again, a Michigan guy where I grew up. And I gained even more respect for uh, McGregor uh, when he uh, went out there and did his best against Floyd. And uh, I, I'm pulling for him. I, I, I think he has a, a good shot to uh, get things going again <clears throat> in, uh, in uh, MMA. So, uh, yeah, that's my guy. Glenn, thank you for your time. I really liked watching you play, and I hope you have a great summer. Thank you very much. And, you know, we, 
Appreciate you too. We both got this little thing going on. Look, we almost look like twins. I just didn't wear my hat. <laughs> and my stroke is a bit weaker than yours. So thank you once again. <laughs>